Hello and welcome to another video review. This is the Bureau XCOM Declassified for PC, Mac, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. This is a tactical third-person shooter by 2K Marin that started life as a first-person shooter, at least it was shown off first as a first-person shooter, that looked an awful lot like Bioshock, actually. And that was in 2010, but the game didn't come out until 2013. And it was fairly obvious that it had been through development hell. Apparently, it was in development since around 2006, and through numerous different developers. So right off the bat, you know that there's going to be something horribly wrong with it, because no game goes into development quite that long and emerges unscathed. And of course, this thing spawned all kinds of vitriol from the XCOM fanbase, with one of the more notable reactions being, of course, Spoonie with his whole BETRAYAL thing at that year's E3, which is actually pretty amusing if you look that up. But the question ultimately becomes, did they manage to salvage this thing and actually deliver an interesting game, or does it just fall into the same pit that pretty much any game in development hell falls into? Well, as far as presentation goes, it does run on Unreal Engine 3, and what you're seeing is actually the DirectX 9 version of the game, because this thing is plagued by myriad problems, one of them being, I can't record it in DirectX 11 mode. Oh, it'll play in DirectX 11 mode, but it won't record, and I have no idea why. And it's just things like this that completely baffle me with this game. Things like, it's an NVIDIA branded game, where they have the whole NVIDIA the way it's meant to be played, and yet if you turn on PhysX, it crashes the game. So right off the bat, it's not making a particularly great impression, right? Well, when you get into the actual visuals themselves, you find that they are thoroughly mediocre and that the color scheme is generally pretty terrible. There's a lot of brown and occasional grays and very, very occasional colors that are not brown or gray. And usually, those are just the result of lasers and explosions, not really because they actually put in a lot of color in this thing. Which is kind of weird, because when they first unveiled it, it actually had a bit more color than it does now. Of course, it still has more color than most games released at that time period, so I guess that's a bit worth commending, but ultimately the game just doesn't look very good. You've got a lot of really plasticky looking people with only decent modeling and often rather archaic looking animations, particularly with lip sync. When you've got games going all the way back to, say, Half-Life 2 that have better facial animations and such like that, you know you've got a problem. And even if you crank the visuals up in DirectX 11 mode, it doesn't really look any different from DirectX 9 mode. All they did was add in a slight bit of tessellation, which really doesn't do all that much for the game, honestly. So, that's kind of problematic, actually. The interface is at least fairly clean and works pretty well for the most part. Although, there are some issues when I get to the gameplay, but I'll get to that later. And then there's the sound design, which is kind of hilariously all over the place. In that, the voice acting is not outright bad, necessarily. But, it's not particularly good either, particularly when your main character is basically Growly McGrowson. No, seriously, listen to this guy. Agent, you need to report to the infirmary. What? But I... I feel fine. Don't argue with me. Just report to the infirmary now. Doesn't really instill too much confidence in the character himself, does it? Well, that's only one of this game's problems. Where the voice acting, again, it's not necessarily bad, but it just feels lifeless and sterile, oddly enough. So, you end up with a situation where the characters just don't have a whole lot of personality and they're just kind of there. And the sound effects and music don't really do all that much to enhance the experience either. The music itself is just fairly generic stuff that really doesn't stick with you. And mostly, I don't even notice it's there. I mean, I know I turn down the music a bit, but I always do that in every game. It's just that the music in this is generic enough that I don't even notice it's there. Because I don't really care. With generic soundtracks, it's really hard to actually care. And the sound effects themselves, well, they're average at best, really. I mean, some of the guns sound alright, but then you get to the laser weapons, and some of them have the definite pew-pew noise, and others just sound bizarre, like the scatter laser. I don't really know what it's supposed to sound like, but it's just kind of this obnoxious shrieking kind of noise. 
it's kind of hard to describe. You just kind of have to hear it for yourself. And things like that just don't really do all that much for the game. So the presentation ultimately ends up being really lackluster as a result. But obviously what really matter here are the story and the gameplay. And the story in this is that you play as Agent William Carter, who works for the Bureau, which later becomes known as XCOM. And the plot starts out with him finding an infected military officer and being shot by her only to have the thing that was in the briefcase that was supposed to be delivered to Director Falk does some wibbly-wobbly space magic bullshit and heals him of his wounds and he blacks out, he wakes up, and it's miraculous. And from there, you basically go on to try to fight the alien invasion and the plot flounders for quite a while, until it picks up again later on with some of the most inane, nonsensical garbage that you will see in quite a long time. Honestly, the plot in this game is so incredibly bad, I'm going to spoil it for you, because I do not care. If you don't want spoilers, I'll have a time code for where you can skip ahead. But here's the problem. It turns out that that thing that was in the briefcase was actually an ethereal which basically takes over Carter's mind. And it turns out that the entire time you've been playing, you've actually been playing as this ethereal which is controlling Carter's actions. And the entire alien invasion is to find this ethereal that has taken over your brain. Now, of course, keep in mind that the ethereals in this game are basically nothing at all like they were in the previous ones, and they're suddenly beings made of pure energy. And there's this whole hive mind thing going on with the aliens called Mosaic that directs all of their actions as long as they have this implant that connects them to it. Are you seeing why this is stupid yet? Never mind that it doesn't even at all fit in with the continuity of any of the other XCOM games, but just the plot in and of itself, even if you didn't have XCOM to deal with, is incredibly stupid. You can actually feel your brain cells dying as you play this game. And it's not just from the incredibly stupid plot, but it's also from the just incredibly bland and uninteresting characters. They basically have no personality whatsoever. Or if they do have something vaguely resembling a personality, it's something incredibly cliched and, frankly, annoying. So, what you're left with is basically nothing on the writing front. It all just feels like a game that was slapped together at the last minute because they had to meet a deadline, and all they had to work with throughout the entirety of development was just table scraps anyway. So they did what they could with what they had, and what they could do is something that is downright horrible. So, they better hope that the gameplay makes up for this, right? Well, guess what? It doesn't. I should note that when this thing was first revealed, it looked like a really crappy version of Bioshock. And now, when it's actually out and playable, it's basically just a really crappy version of Mass Effect. What do you have? Well, it's a third-person tactical cover-based shooter. You have two squad mates you can order around at any time, and you can, of course, rename them if you want. So, I actually named them appropriately, considering what the game is trying to do, and you can very easily see that here. But, ultimately, what's going to happen is that you're going to have these characters level up as you continue through the game, and they will get access to new abilities, which are called perks, which give them all different things that they can do. There's a bunch of different classes in the game. For example, the Commando class gets offensive abilities, whereas the Engineer gets more support roles, and of course the Recon is for snipers. And each class can only use one type of weapon. For example, Recon only gets sniper rifles. Commando only gets rifles, and in the case of one particular weapon, the laser submachine gun. And for large swaths of the game, you will find that you don't really have anything to upgrade to. You're not going to upgrade the Springfield sniper rifle, for example, until you get fairly late in the game and unlock the Plasma sniper rifle. So you're probably going to find using those weapons particularly boring, and eventually I managed to find something that was actually better than the sniper rifle, which is the Blaster Launcher. And if anything, it almost made the game too easy, but that's something for a bit further down the line. Now, it should be noted that the way you command your squad around is through the so-called Battle Focus Mode, 
which is basically just the pause mechanic from Mass Effect. So it allows you to move your guys around into various bits of cover and set up ambushes, set up chained moves where you might lift a guy into the air. Yes, they have basically the biotic lift ability, but they don't call it a biotic lift, it's just a lift ability. But regardless, you can lift a guy up in the air and then have your sniper pick the guy off with a critical strike, for example. But there's all sorts of different things you can do with that, and it's advisable to use the battle focus mode as much as you possibly can, because the AI is mind-bogglingly stupid. They don't seem to understand what cover actually is. If they're getting shot at, they will just sit there out of cover and let themselves get shot. They'll run directly into enemies' lines of sight and, of course, lines of fire and just get mowed down incredibly quickly. They will sit there and, when they're trying to revive you, do so from a completely exposed position. All sorts of things like that. And it's very easy for them to get stuck on things. So what ends up happening is that more often than not, you are just babysitting your squad. Need I remind you that you're supposed to be this elite fighting force, and yet here you are, and your guys can't even figure out that a, a chest-high wall is there to hide behind when somebody is shooting at you. It's pretty sad, actually. But even the battle focus mode has severe problems. Controlling it is actually a massive pain in the ass. Why? Well, it doesn't let you actually just straight up target things like any reasonable game would. No. Instead, you have to target them by moving around the world. What do I mean by that? Well, when you target an ability, it will bring up a cursor on the ground, usually. Unless it's something that's very specifically targeted, like a critical strike, where it will just immediately home in on enemies. But if you have to throw down, say, a turret or something like that. Well, it's going to bring up this reticule for sticking it on the ground. But you can't just move the cursor around and set it where you want to set it. Oh no. You have to move around the terrain. It will actually not let you move the cursor through cover or over cover. It has to be moved around it for some undescribably stupid reason. It makes the targeting actually a massive pain in the ass, and you can only do it with the keyboard. On console, you do it with an analog stick, but on here, you do it with the keyboard. And switching between the various abilities that you have for your various squad mates is also a bit of a pain because it sometimes just deselects things for no discernible reason where you're just trying to get the cursor on the right spot and it just won't go on there for some particular reason. Usually it's not that big of a problem, you can usually work around it, but it becomes painfully obvious that this thing was designed for a controller. But even on a controller, it would just feel incredibly awkward. So, I don't know what they were going for with it, but it doesn't work very well. And the combat itself is basic cover shooter fare. You hide behind cover, you poke your head out, you take a few shots, you go back behind cover, you reload, you move between cover, that's it. The controls even feel kind of stiff for moving around. For example, you might want to try to move between cover, for example, from left to right. But instead of moving left to right, you accidentally head pressed forward, and suddenly you'll start charging forward. Or you will actually press forward and try to do your whole charge out of cover thing only it won't actually charge you forward out of cover it will make you move to the other piece of cover to your left or right for no discernible reason it doesn't happen all that often but it's enough that it's pretty annoying and it certainly doesn't help that you're only allowed to carry two weapons at a time and a pretty minuscule amount of ammo for them you can only replenish your ammo by finding other weapons of the same type lying around, or by finding ammunition boxes for them. For example, if you want to replenish ammo for your sniper rifle, your Springfield, then you'll need to find a box of bullets. But if you want to replenish ammo for your scatter laser, you're going to need to find energy clips. And these aren't necessarily in advantageous positions. so you're going to find eventually that you're just going to start scrambling for ammo because the enemies are bullet sponges and not much else. In fact, the game really isn't hard. I cranked the difficulty all the way up. 
It didn't make the enemies smarter. All it did was increase their damage output to a degree that was downright ridiculous. And it made their health even more ridiculous. So they turned into even more bullet sponges than they already were. It's an incredibly lazy way to handle difficulty, and frankly, I didn't bother with it after a while. Having to repeat sections of the game because it just decided to throw a lot of enemies at you that kept respawning, I might add, and just wasting shot after shot on enemies made it just incredibly irritating. So I cranked the difficulty back down to medium, but then it became way too easy, because even bosses on medium difficulty go down in only a handful of shots. I wish I was joking, but you can see it for yourself. So ultimately, the combat ends up being insanely unsatisfying and completely uninteresting. There's not any real tactical depth to it, there's not any real challenge to it other than, well, did you manage to defeat the bullet sponge, or did you just take way too much damage? Because that's kind of the only way you can fail in this thing, is taking a lot of damage. And then there's the other parts of the game where they threw in some side stuff you could do. You can do a few side missions here and there. They're not interesting. But you can also send your agents that aren't in your squad off on dispatch missions. And this allows them to gain experience. It's basically lifted directly from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Only instead of being tied to just a general timer, it's tied to when you complete missions. So if you complete a mission and then you come back, your mission that you sent the guys on will be complete. And of course they'll level up from that and things like that. But it should be noted that you can in fact lose squad members. And that goes for both when you're actually in the field with your squad yourself, and when you send them on dispatch missions. You can in fact lose squad members. And if you lose a particularly high leveled one, it becomes infuriating to get someone for a replacement because they have to level up too, and leveling them up takes quite a while. You only have a limited number of missions, you can't level them up all the way to be the, the dream team, so to speak. And when you lose a high level guy, it just gets annoying. The only way you can actually lose them in the uh, campaign is if you actually leave them to die. Now if you don't get to them in time to revive them, or you don't hit them with a healing uh, power, then they will actually die. Uh, if you are playing on a higher difficulty, you can only stabilize them. If you're playing on medium or lower, I don't know about the next highest up difficulty, but the medium or lower setting, it will just straight up revive them. And so it's like they thought that permadeath was a major feature of XCOM, which it was, and said, you know what, let's throw that in here. That'll totally make it XCOM, right? Well, no, it doesn't. This game feels like it's cobbled together from ideas that were stolen from all sorts of other games. Mostly Mass Effect, a couple of ideas from things like Assassin's Creed, and it really doesn't have an identity of its own. Add to that the fact that when it's copying things, it's painfully badly done, and you have a recipe for disaster. This game is awful. Basically the best I can say for it is that it's playable, and I guess that the presentation isn't the worst I've seen, although it's not even really average for its time. And its time was only a couple of years ago. It's not even like this is an old game or anything. It's still pretty new. And everything else it does, it does incredibly poorly. A lot of people would look at this thing and go, oh, well, you XCOM fans are just mad because it's not really a full-on XCOM game. No, we're not mad because it's just not an XCOM game, because it really isn't an XCOM game. But... We're mad because not only is it not an XCOM game, it's a really crappy game in general. It's a project that should never have borne the XCOM name. If it was named something else entirely, it would just be another crappy game. But they went ahead and used the XCOM name because they knew it would move copies. And that is incredibly cynical. So ultimately, I give it a 1.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching.